Hi guys, welcome to the latest episode of this Unbelievable Life. Today I have with me dear longtime friend, and we're talking like all the way back to kindergarten friend, Matt Evans. He is both a motivational speaker and a motivational coach. And today he's going to talk to us in part about breaking the status quo and about being better, doing better, and then being intentional with your, with your actions and your drive, and then believing in yourself. Matt, take it away. All right. Well, um, so yeah, my name is Matt and, um, thank you for the opportunity, Nikki, to share a little bit with your audience. Um, you know, you'd ask me a question about who am I or, or a little bio. And like I had shared a little bit earlier, uh, my goal is just to become better every day, to always be progressing. I think there's this concept that if I um, get to a place and I can just kind of settle down and, and have it maybe a bit easier, and when I get there someday when, I'll be happy. Uh, you know, for a large part of my life, uh, I've been very driven to achieve and to accomplish. You know, when I was thinking back when we were kids, um, I was signing a lot of autographs. I don't know if you remember that. They're worth zero, by the way. <laughs> Nobody's going to pay you for my autograph. But I signed a lot of autographs. And I always told people I'm going to be a professional baseball player. Well, I don't. that didn't go well. I never had enough skill to be a professional baseball player. And then when I was playing uh, football, I was uh, injured. I got a neck injury. And so that wasn't going to happen. So then I had to go be, who am I and what am I going to do? Um, and I always tried to be somebody that others could respect, um, never make a mistake. And that became almost a little bit of a, a hindrance. Because as I was driving and pushing myself so hard to be something that other people couldn't reject, that's important. I said, you know, I said that that's on purpose. Like I, I didn't want to be rejected rather than saying, who can I be and what's my potential and trying to make that happen. I was just trying to be someone others would not reject. And I think in a large part, I lost who I really was. And so now here I am halfway through my life, or maybe even tomorrow I might pass, right? Like you never know what really is halfway. We're just basing it on some arbitrary number. But the truth of the matter is tomorrow may be my last day. Today may be my last day. So I really don't know how much longer I have. And so who am I? What am I doing? What's important? Where am I going? I had to come to this place and it occurred probably after COVID, I, I Watched a movie during COVID that many people may may uh, know of, and it's called Lone Survivor. Uh, if you've never seen of it, it's of a Navy SEAL, and uh, Marcus Luttrell is his name, and the whole Operation Red Wings. And it was a very tragic uh, time in our, our military history where many special force operators and people were lost. But in watching that movie, it shook me because COVID, it was a time for, I think, many of us where we had some fear going on. We were asking ourselves, what does this really mean? Is this like the the, the end of, of the life as we know it? Where is this going? And I realized that I had fought so hard to be something else and to achieve things that maybe weren't worth living for. Some might on the outside look and say, wow, that's amazing what you've accomplished, but really does it give life? Is it really something at the end of the day I'd be proud that I've achieved and done? And also, who am I comparing myself to? So two years, three years ago, when all that started, when COVID and I saw that movie, it shook me because Nikki, I, I was living life afraid to really live life. So it's been a reinventing of myself and I'm asking, well, who am I? Where am I going? What's important to me? And how am I going to finish if tomorrow is, or if in 45 more years, tomorrow, that's how am I going to finish? And so I think if I can just share a little bit <clears throat> about what brought me here, what people might benefit from, it's this. The way that, and I love psychology, right? I love learning about why do we, why do we behave the way we do and what's our mindset? And I apply that to both myself as an individual, but then my marriage and my children and my organization. 
So here's a couple of things that I've learned from mentors and from an organization that taught many of the people around the world. And it's a, it's a, they're pioneers in a lot of applying cognitive psychology to the workplace and to uh, business leaders. We're constantly perceiving, we're constantly perceiving, we have our perceptions and they're, they're reading far more data than what we're consciously aware of. So as we're perceiving with our eyes, with our feeling, with our ears, that information is coming through, but it's not necessarily something that I'm noticing unless it's important to me. But as that information comes in, I begin to associate it. Sorry. I begin to associate it with, have I ever experienced anything like this before? And if I have, and once again, this happens almost subconsciously, if I have, then it can really influence how I evaluate what to do. Do I run away from that? Do I hide from that? And then it impacts my decision making. So we perceive, we associate, we evaluate it, and then we decide what are we going to do with, with what's happening to me? What am I hearing? What am I experiencing? So in understanding our brain and how it works, and then understanding how we get this behavior, because most of our behavior is habitual, whether it's emotional habits or physical habits, mental habits, it's habitual. We got into a groove, into a routine, and we really ran that course for many, many years. And that's me. So as I think about my brain, how it works, I'm trying to teach my kids how to be internally driven, how to be internally driven, to set and chart their own course, to understand how to create a vision, to how to live within that, lead themselves as a human, right? Can't lead others if we don't lead ourselves first. So once we understand ourselves and we can lead ourselves and help ourselves be disciplined, then we can try to lead some other people. So in part of leading other people, like my kids, for example, it's okay to, for them to make messes. It's okay for them to make mistakes. There was a time in my life where I didn't think I, that I didn't think that making mistakes was allowed. But when I talk to people who are, say, special force operators who say, listen, all about becoming a special force operator in the military was about making mistakes. When I hear that, the failure is a part of their becoming a very high performing uh, person in their, in their function. Like mistakes are required. Fear of failure doesn't have a place. And so I try to teach my kids, hey, listen, got to lead yourself first got to be driven internally, not motivated from the outside, right? Driven internally, set your course. Where do you want to go? Don't be afraid to make mistakes. And then we give them opportunity to fail. And then we encourage and love them through it so that they can build their self-confidence, build their self-esteem so that they can achieve and accomplish more of what they want. And Dr. Bandura talked about a lot of this uh, in the 70s with his Bobo Dial experiment and other things. Um, self-efficacy. What is self-efficacy? It's the belief that we can achieve what we intend. intend. So I try to teach my kids to have belief in themselves because it matters. Have I done anything like this before? And can I do it again? And if they face with a circumstance where they really don't know how they can pull it off, all they have to do is look back into their history and say, where did I achieve this before? Or something similar and say, how did that go for me? How did I get through it? And then apply that lesson to now. So anyway, with, with the understanding of how our brain works, self-leadership, then we can better lead ourselves. We can better lead our families. We can actually better lead our, our kids, our, be a better leader in a workplace and do something that matters. Um, I think, you know, habits, if we talk about habits, because habits are a large part of that. What happens if you don't like where you're going? What happens if you don't like the habits you're creating? I think the number one thing to be able to handle that is bring it to a conscious level. So much of that occurs just as a subconscious. You just do it without much, much thought. If we can bring it to our conscious level by saying, what is it about others? that I like when I'm around so-and-so and I, and they make me feel good. Why is that? What are they doing? That's engaging to me. And then we can say, I want more of that in my life. 
So getting mentors around us, we can learn from and, and see what are their experiences, what are the attributes that they have. Then we can bring it to a conscious level of, okay, I want to be more physically fit. I want to be more loving toward my family. I want to speak kinder to my children. I want to be tolerant of their um, mistakes. And I've not been very tolerant because remember in the very beginning, I said that I really wanted to be someone that others couldn't reject. Well, people reject people who make mistakes. People reject others who don't measure up to their standards and I didn't want to be that whack-a-mole that gets whacked, right? So I've had to learn to be okay with my kids making mistakes. So I've had to learn to say, okay, that's a, a, an emotional habit where I maybe have an outburst where I want to correct my kids. If they're not doing their homework, I'm going to try to control it because I don't want them to fail. I've had to be able to say, wait, hold on. Where does that come from? I realize where that comes from is my own fear of failure. It's not necessarily great for my kids because the cost of them failing now is less than the cost of them failing in the future. Let them fail now. Let them fail now. They get held back in fifth grade. It's better than getting you know held back and say as a senior and, and maybe not achieving what they really want. So I've had to be able to change some habits of mine. Quick to explode on my children because I was afraid that they were going to fail at something. I had to back up and say, it's okay for them to make a mess. It's okay for them to be held back because we're going to love them and teach them through it and show them how to be an overcomer. Um, so anyway, I think the whole uh, kind of message of some of this is uh, sometimes our fears, not sometimes, I would say we have to come, and this was from a, a buddy of mine. He had to come to a place and he was a special force operator. He had to come to a place where failure was okay. Failure was okay. Um, and, and learning where he was deficient was more of a stepping stone to becoming stronger and better. So I personally have had to realize that in my life, it wasn't about protecting myself and I couldn't let my fear control me anymore. And I wasn't going to let fear control my children. And I wasn't going to let fear control my the people I lead in my workplace. I'm going to help them explore, test their theories, fail, find a way to succeed and just keep being persistent and build resilience. Uh, and that's what I'm chasing right now. So how can I be the best that I can be for the people around me while I lead myself and finish my day strong? Oh, any last words? You know, one of these days, one of these days I'm gonna do something like this and just give it to my kids, right? I thought about writing a book. Problem is I never get around to writing. And I, I struggle to put my thoughts on paper, but obviously you can see I, I talk probably easier than I write. Um, if I could give my kids some advice, I would say to them, have grace for yourself, love yourself. Yeah. We put on ourselves so much expectation that is both internally placed on us, as well as we allow it to come at us from the outside. And sometimes we just get twisted into so much of a ball that we don't know who we are, but we fail to give ourselves grace. And in doing that, we fail to live fully. So my whole concept is fully alive and slower still. So, so oftentimes running through life, slow down. Because really, if I had five more minutes, if I, if I'd say, and I think about this a lot, if I, if I was at the end of my life, would I be uh, cherishing or lamenting my kids fighting, yelling, and screaming as much as they do today? And the answer is, I'd probably be cherishing it. I remember and I say, you know, it really wasn't worth getting bent out of shape. It wasn't worth it. And I would want more of those moments in my life. So I tell myself in the rat race of life, I would want to tell my kids, give yourself grace, give yourself grace. You got to learn to love yourself. And then most oftentimes it's not worth getting spun up over. Most of what happens to us is not worth the mental and emotional anguish we put ourselves through. If we would just step back and go, all right, slow down. And sometimes we have to close our eyes and breathe and just slow ourselves down. Why? Because we're trying to react out of this feeling we got to control something or this anger or this other 
thing that's maybe deeper. My point is, is sometimes we have to just tell ourselves it's okay. Slow down. Next, I would tell my kids, we have to prepare for opportunities before they arrive. So oftentimes we want to get that opportunity now. Why am I not a vice president now? Why am I not on the, a football star now? Why am I not a multi-million dollar real estate salesperson? Why am I not a multi-million dollar real estate investor? Why am I not teacher of the year? Well, because we haven't prepared before that would occur, that opportunity would come. We didn't prepare ourselves. So many people want that, but they don't put the time in to prepare for the opportunity when it comes. So I would tell my sons, my kids, my listen, you've got to prepare yourself in obscurity when no one knows you even exist. And then when the opportunity comes, you're going to be the likely candidate because you've done the hard work when no one saw you. So do in the dark what you need to do when they give you the chance to be on the stage in the lights. Um, and I would also tell my kids, listen, you got to love others well. So much of this world is negative. So much of this, what people are selling you all the time, their ideas, their concept, their beliefs. You don't have to buy it. They're just selling it to you. Don't buy it. Not You're not going to buy it. Instead, love others well. Do something that others aren't willing to do. And that's take the time to notice other people, treat them with love and kindness and respect and help them become better just by simply understanding. So seeking first to understand and then to be understood if you want to think of Stephen Covey, right? Those would be my advice for anybody. It's what I try to teach my boys. Are we perfect? Absolutely not. We have our own struggles and challenges, but here's the thing. If they can at least do that and I can say, listen, back here, sons, I know you're going through challenge now. I know life is challenging now. I know for myself, it was my, uh, we had some special needs in the family. Uh, and then I thought, man, my future is not going to look so bright if my kids um, have these issues. Um, then uh, my wife got in a car accident, which was really debilitating. And then she got chronic sickness with COVID. And we've had some job changes in there. And we couldn't always meet our bills. And that was like the last 15 years. <laughs> At times, it was dark. It was very dark. And it still has a tendency to feel dark like am i really going anywhere i would want to tell my boys listen opportunity is everywhere in adversity if we just reframe it and see it and then i would tell them listen remember the small wins when you did something that felt challenging and you succeeded and use that as your catapult to get through those really big, overwhelming things. And then don't get caught in your own brain. Get to action. Once you've had a chance to process your emotions, recognize them for what they are, own those emotions, it's time to start acting. Don't let them debilitate you. You are capable. You've done it before. You can do it again. Let's go look at where you succeeded and let's just take that forward. So those are, that would be my advice for anyone who's listening that I also try to teach to my kids and the people that I lead at work. Matt, thank you so much for such wonderful information. And I hope that our audience can really chew on the words of advice that you've given us. And if anybody has any questions for Matt or if you'd like to talk to him about be a motivational speaker for you or a motivational coach, or you just want to get them on your podcast, give me a shout and I can help connect you. In the meantime, I hope that everyone has a blessed and wonderful day. And thank you for being part of today's This Unbelievable Life podcast.